World War I was unquestionably one of the bloodiest wars ever fought in human history. Old tactics were met with new technology, resulting in a massive bloodshed. It took place between July 28, 1914 and November 11, 1918 in Europe, the Mideast, Africa, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, and the Mediterranean, North, and Baltic Seas. This was the first war in which it was not just fought on land, but in sea and sky. The two sides were known as the Allied Powers and the Central Powers. The Allied Powers, consisting of Britain, France, Serbia, and Russia, and later the US, fought against the Central Powers, which consisted of Austria-Hungary, Germany, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire. After years of mass bloodshed, the Central Powers began to fall apart. Soon only Germany was left, and with the arrival of the US into the war, Germany was easily defeated. To end the war once and for all, the main countries involved met at a council in Paris to sign a treaty. The big four that were the victors of the war took charge at the conference. At the time, Woodrow Wilson was the US president, the Prime Minister of Italy was Vittorio Orlando, the Prime Minister of France was George Clemenceau, and the British Prime Minister was David Lloyd George. The defeated Central Powers were not invited to the conference, and neither was the new Bolshevik government of Russia. The Paris Peace Conference was organized by the Allies, and the product of the conference was known as the Treaty of Versailles. The Big Four met to discuss what they believed would bring peace, however, each country had their own idea. George Clemenceau of France believed that Germany should be revoked of their overseas territory and land previously owned by France and have their navy broken down to the point where they would be too weak to begin another war. He was unhappy with the treaty because he believed it wasn't harsh enough. David Lloyd George, representing Great Britain, was more aggressive and ready to work things out. He partly agreed with France because he believed that Germany should be punished. However, he supported that Germany should not be left weak enough as to not participate in politics and thought that France had unrealistic ideas. The U.S. President Woodrow Wilson wrote the 14 points, which he believed were realistic views that would create peace. France and Britain refused to accept the statements for different reasons. The American public was also against the 14 points, rather believing that the best way to secure peace was through staying clear of European affairs and signing a separate treaty with Germany and its allies. The Treaty of Versailles was meant to create a peaceful, safe world nonetheless. It is known as an epic fail that led to World War II and various other conflicts. There were many sections of the Treaty of Versailles stating various points, yet there were plenty that blamed Germany, but the main one was Article 231. Article 231 stated that Germany must take full blame for the war. This was followed by many clauses that stated that Germany must pay to repair any and all battlegrounds of the Allies, especially France. The total came up to 6.6 .6 billion euros, which is equivalent to 442 billion dollars today. On top of that, the treaty also heavily limited Germany's military. Germany was limited to an army consisting of no more than 100,000 men, including officers. She could not have an air force or a navy, could not make weapons in their factories unless approved by the Allies, nor could they engage in trade for weapons. The Allies intended to cripple Germany's military so that Germany could not cause another war, but they did not want to disable them too much that they could not defend themselves should the need arise. Britain and America believed they were being too strict with Germany, but France believed they were being too lenient. However, no changes were made to satisfy either side. The Treaty of Versailles also included the formation of the League of Nations. The League of Nations was an international organization that resolved international disputes. Even though it was suggested by President Woodrow Wilson as a part of the 14 points, the United States never became a member of it. The last of the 14 points stated, a general association of nations must be formed under specific covenants for the purpose of affording mutual guarantees of political independence and the territorial integrity to great and small states alike. Although the treaty was to bring peace among the countries, Hinang, author of The Origins of the First War, states, The peace conference was held at a time of unprecedented political, social, economic, and ideological upheaval. Any peace settlement would have to operate within highly unstable international and domestic environments, and the international instability made the attainment of lasting peace so difficult. George Clemenceau said, We have won the war, now we have to win the peace, and it may be more difficult. Not only was the peace treaty a factor for World War II, it led to the creation of new countries and more wars. Article 231, also known as the War Guilt Clause, is often viewed as the base of the causes of World War II. 
Article 231 stated that Germany was to take the blame for the war and therefore must pay full reparations to repair the damage done in any battles. This definitely caused much resentment towards the Allies in Germany, and no one, including the Allies, was satisfied. This treaty was what gave Hitler the ability to rise to power. The rebuilding of the military gave Germans jobs, and they were paid with the money that was supposed to go to repairing France. This combined with Hitler's rebuilding of the German army and the failure to pay reparations was what started World War II. Overall, this treaty did more harm than good and only served as the base of the powder keg that started World War II.